my aunt, she bought me a, uh, a dual cassette deck for my 13th birthday. So it was, it had like the two, you know, cassettes next to each other and there was a high speed function. And I, uh, I started making my own mixtapes. So I had a friend of mine, this guy named Oren in high school. He used to leave on Friday and whatever he was wearing on Friday, he'd show up to school back, you know, back to school Monday wearing the exact same thing, but looking disheveled. And, uh, and he'd be like, man, you've got to come out with me. I'm going to these parties and warehouses and the music is amazing and the people are amazing. And I'm like, he starts describing me. I'm like, it sounds like a rave. He's, he's like, it is. I'm like, I don't want to go to that. There's people on drugs and all crazy, you know, sex acts happening. And you know, I'm like, that's not for me. He used to come to my place and, uh, and he'd purposely leave these CDs lying around. And, and at that point already, I was you know, completely music fucking nerd. And of course I ended up popping them in. And what I really loved about it was that it didn't end. It was the continue, continuous you know, flow of the music, the tracks, you know, going from one to the other. So eventually when I did go out and I did see the mixer, I was like, that's how it's happening. Because at that point what I was doing was I was high speed dubbing from one track to the other track and then using the pause button as the bridge. And I'd try and find you know, songs that would go really well together and then put them together. So it'd be really abrupt slices. You know, early on, going you know back, you know, my career was built on mixtapes. Hell, it put me through college. I mean, well, I was used to, I used to be able to sell those mixtapes to the stores for ten bucks, and they'd sell them for fifteen. And I mean, and there was these independent shops that were in Toronto that would sell mixtapes. So I was selling you know a thousand, two thousand mixtapes, depending on what the tape was and the you know, popularity of it at that time. So I was trying to put out as many mixtapes as I could. I'd have to go down to the record store. You know, um, on shipment day, and then you know, fight through you know with other guys to try and get the records. Cause it's it's not like now. You know, if, if there's a song that you really wanted, you know, Google the song name, enter. There's the song. Got it. I stopped using CDJs because it started slowing me down. So I no longer wanted to just focus on the idea of matching two songs at the same speed and then and then maybe moving around the channel faders. Why would I take what I'm doing within that interface to burn it onto a CD and play it in this player so maybe I can move around this little knob for hours. It felt like to me when I started at the beginning of my set, start, stop, fast, slow. Half hour later, start, stop, fast, slow. Hour later, start, stop, fast, slow. I create my tracks, my remixes, bootlegs, and all of my DJ mixes in live. My setup consists of my computer, my audio interface, and my iPad right now. I've downsized. Before, I was tracking around and all kinds of MIDI controllers I was rolling with, and I was, I was quite fond of them just because of, of the price and the size. My controller, I use, I use, a, I use an iPad 2 to, to control a lot of playing, and I've got two different apps. I've got a I've got a Touch OSC app and I've got another app for, for live, it's called Touchable. The okay, Chaos Oscillator, that's something else. That's actually, it's, it's, they're really cool, they're, yeah. they're, they're super fun. So, um, so it's, 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 a, it's an analog synth with a hundred presets on it that you can do manipulation on an XY pad. So for me, because I want to do some scratching, there's a preset on it that I'm quite fond of, so I, I plug it directly into the channel. Uh, on the mixer, and uh, and then I EQ it to how I want it to sound. I tap in the tempo of in and around what I'm playing at, and away I go. I can play on it like that. Novation came out with a, a something called a launch pad. I loved using that. It was really great. Uh, it was a little difficult for me to mix with it just because of the way that the increments moved. It was like crick, 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 crick. It was missing those middle tiers, and it just felt like when it was it was moving, you know, in between each volume increment, that it was like. I don't know, it just didn't sound very smooth. So um, when I did find out about these apps and you know, you know, put put everything together and, and tried to have it, you know, work out the way I wanted to, and uh, it's way smoother. It's way smoother on a touch screen. I can actually draw in what I want, and uh, and I'm still I'm still building on it. Like the, whatever I have right now, after every show, it gives me another idea and I think a different way of how to go back. And, and you know, rethink the actual interface that's on my screen. Feels like I'm in a beta of it. Yeah, I've had a couple of situations where it's gone fucking Ari. Like, what about that, that woman that fell on my laptop on Friday night? You think I saw that coming? You didn't think my life flashed through my eyes that I've just spent the last seven months building that machine to get it to where the hell I wanted to go? And then, you know, some stranger falls on it. And then who's liable? It's not like I've got club insurance that it can be like, doo, doo, doo. yeah, I'm 
drunk high girl fell on my computer. Can you send me a check? Yeah. yeah I don't know what that clause is called.